Hi guys and welcome back to Pass the Move. And for today's episode, we are still in Spain or Espania uh, with Barcelona. Instead, this time, uh, of course, it's a really exciting team to take on. And even if you're not a mid- if you're not a Barcelona fan, rather, uh, and you know you've taken them on, it's a huge role to do. Uh, just like to point out, of course, this is exactly how I look like in real life. <laughs> not at all far from it or anything like that. it's actually decent to be honest it's, it's kind of close um but yeah anyways the whole point of this episode is actually to do a tactical and team guide um so uh, i just want to point out of course that you know you're not obligated to follow each of you know every single tiny instruction i give but anyways the whole point is uh you know of me not planning these type of episodes is uh, of course to actually take you through each one step by step just as i would if i was starting it you know a career with barcelona just show you how i will go about to do things so one of the first things i do is of course sort out my staff and uh, i need to try and find someone's judgment who i can trust so I'll try and find someone with a high judgment ability. Pepe Costa seems to be the best shout. Decent judgment uh, potential, of course. Uh, your assistant manager is the one who's probably going to be the one, uh, you know, who shows up the most. But we're going to have to trust Pepe Costa just for the sake of, you know, uh, his ability, judgment of ability, rather. And uh, so, just for the sake of this episode, we'll be getting rid of all these low knees or the players who Barcelona have loaned out rather as you can tell they have a bit of a big squad and I'd just like to point out as I do in all my episodes you should have a squad of 22 no more and no less uh, and the reason being is anyways my personal preferences is because uh, you should have a first 11 of leading or star players or anything above that of course world class players that should be your first 11 and then your backup 11 should be youngsters with potential that way the youngsters who have potential of becoming world class players are learning from world class players and you know world class players are being kept on their toes by youngsters with potential uh, so another thing we could do is actually have a look at the tactics um, Barcelona set up for 4-3-3 I think that would be the best thing for this squad I'm still yet to have a look at the team uh, but my best, my bet is that this is probably the best. We'll have a look at my assistant, what he thinks. He actually recommends the 4-2-3-1, which is probably a decent shout as well. So we'll have a look at the team now. Uh, sort out the players, see who's actually ready for first team and who's not. So if we have a look at Nili, uh, it's unlikely that he's ready for the team. He's only a second division player. We were supposed to trust, is it Pepe Costa? Yeah, Pepe Costa's uh, judgment, and he thinks Nili's not ready, so we'll just get rid of him for you know for this to the under 19. Send him to the under 19s, but of course don't actually do that. Um, you know, you could probably sell him off maybe. Uh, Marlon is actually a low knee, but again he's not ready for the first team either, so it's a bit weird. Uh, if we can cancel him, no, we can't. Can't terminate his loan unfortunately. So maybe just send him to the. Barcelona B if you could, if not just send him to under 19s, we have no use for him. Jordi Massip, one of the goalkeepers, he's the third goalkeeper and it looks like he's not at all ready for the first division at all, the La Liga, so it makes no point of keeping him in this Barcelona team, uh, so sell him off, but we're just going to put him in the under 19s. Matteo, at least he's ready, he's only a good player, but he at least he's ready for division. Of course, uh, Ter Stegen should be good enough, uh, Jasper is good enough. Roberto and I think that's pretty much it everyone here should be good enough um, yeah so like I mentioned in the Madrid episode it's because Barcelona and these teams have very top players you know proper world-class players such as as far as Neymar and Messi uh, anyone else just falls you know too far low you wouldn't normally see uh, a player such as maybe Rafinha or Marc-Ander uh, Ter Stegen being just two and a half stars uh, very unlikely. I'm pretty sure this is my assistant's recommendation. That's why it's really wrong. But yeah, anywhere else he wouldn't be two and a half stars. It's just because you know you have a lot to uh, fill up. I guess big boots to to fill. Uh, but yeah, now let's have a look at the squad. See how many players we've got. We've got 21, so we're actually one player short without even having to make a tactic just yet. Uh, so something we can keep an eye on. But yeah, I think now we can uh, g you know sort out the players through. Uh, ability and try and make a best 11 out of this squad and uh, see what tactics we can come up with so we've got Suarez of course uh, the striker capable of playing anywhere just in behind the striker as well but his best role is of course 
striker one of the best strikers in the world at 29 years of age of course you're getting someone who's in your in, your, in his prime as well Neymar inside forward on the left can play as an advanced playmaker as well as a striker the reason we need to consider all of these players uh, ability, uh, not abilities, their positions. We can't just consider the best recommended one. We need to consider where else because we're going to try and make a best 11 out of this. And my bet is some of these players are going to have to be sacrificed. So we're going to try and squish them all into the same team. Messi, of course, the opposite of Neymar, right attack and striker. Uh, incredible stats there, by the way. Attributes, just how many 20s does he have? Uh, we've got Iniesta, the central midfielder, also capable of playing as an attacking midfielder, left wings as well as decent shout too. Uh, Rakitic, central midfielder, attacking midfielder as well. You could maybe retrain him as a defensive midfielder. We'll see where we need to squeeze him in. I think we already did this. Busquets, defensive midfielder, capable maybe being retrained as a central defender uh, and a central midfielder as well. Um, we've got Dennis Suarez, an attacking midfielder. Um, Capable of playing on the left as well, both the deeper left and the, the attacking left. We've got Alaba, left winger apparently, but he's probably going to be used as a fullback. Uh, Andre Gomez, central midfielder, again, can probably be retraced as an attacking midfielder. And Gerard Piquet, uh, how far do we go? Was it this much? No, Gerard Piquet, they're making them rounding off the top 11 as a central defender. Uh, so, uh, I think you should definitely consider, you know, uh, getting rid of some of the stuff and keeping the others. Juan Carlos, your assistant, is a decent assistant, uh, just by looking at his judgment of ability and man, in ma man management. But I think because you're Barcelona, you might do better off without him. You could possibly be a goalkeeping coach instead. Uh, but again, yeah, down to personal preferences. He's got decent judgment of ability, so this looks like it's just about a best 11. And my bet is, uh, you know... It, in real life, maybe this is the best 11 as well. So we have to try and consider it. So looking at this team, I can understand why my assistant said the 4-2-3-1 is our best bet. Uh, you know, if you wanted to fit Messi, Neymar and Suarez, you could also consider the 4-3-3. So I think uh, Barcelona are a little bit like the um, Madrid team. And I think we are going to give you two tactics, to, uh, or actually three tactics again today. And uh, it will be the same as the Madrid team. So we'll be going with a 4-4-2 as our direct style of play. If you're, if, you know, we're just giving you options whether you want to be a direct style of team or a uh, possession-based team. So we're going to give you four possession-based, we're going to actually give you two tactics. And for the direct style of play, we'll give you one in the 4-4-2. Now, I just want to mention, like I mentioned in my other episodes, I realized there was a bit of a confusion. You don't actually train your players for both, in, uh, you know, both types of tactics rather than both formations. Uh, and the reason being is I like to have my club be known for a style of play basically You know the players that you buy are suited for a certain style of play and whatnot If you have both possession based tactic and a direct style of play You know you're trying to you'll be spreading the squad thin I guess you could say it'll be a bit weird uh, Training them in two different styles and you'd be bringing in two different types, types of players But again of course you're free to do whatever you want to do It's just my um Judgment, I guess you could say. So, uh, for possession base, like I always mentioned, control is your best bet. You can also do standard or control, but you are better off. Um, I mean, not better off. You can also consider doing the other extremes, such as attacking, defensive, contain, or overload. We're just telling you the best bet is counter, standard, or control when you're trying to be a possession based side. So, yeah, if you did, if you are, for example, doing the 4 3 3, then you would train your players. Uh, your three tactics that you can train them in it will all be the 4-3-3 formation but one would be counter, one would be standard, one would be control for example that's how I would normally do it so uh, for the team instructions as you see, as you can see me set it up it's lower, shorter, be more expressive and roam for positions but like I always mention if you want, if you are the type of manager who likes to be very detailed you can get rid of being more expressive, you can retain possession of course uh, you can work the ball into the box, you can play out of the defence uh, you can also look for overlap if you want to be a bit extreme. You can, uh, in order to win the ball back, you can do these instructions. Uh, title marking and staying on uh, and getting stuck in rather are a bit excessive, but you know it just adds, I guess, to the team instructions. So you can also do narrow as well to keep a good team shape as well as keeping your players closer together. That way they're keeping possession taken over fairly well. Now, just like to mention, I've had 60% possession with this type of tactic as well as this type of tactic. So don't expect your players 
to just have more tactics because they've got more I mean, more possession just because they've got more instructions that's just not the way it works it's more about what type of player you have uh, and of course also your instructions but again also the team you're facing um, but yeah this is what I would recommend and I would recommend the same in the 4-3-3 I'm not going to do it over here the 4-4-2 you should definitely be playing on an attacking or counter mentality those ones suit direct style of play more than anywhere uh, more than any other mentality but because Barcelona top team will be going with attacking so again it's really simple higher more direct be more expressive and run from positions um, but once more, if you want to be more detailed, you can get rid of from Rome for positions, you can run at defence and clear ball to flanks. Those are very good shouts for direct style of play. Uh, you know, I guess the excessive tactics again, like I mentioned, is pass into space, hit early crosses, very all good shouts, deeper and less pressing, as well as um, staying on your feet, are very good shouts just for the sake of drawing in your position and maybe trying to keep a good team shape yourself. Uh, and hitting them on the counter possibly. You can also, uh, naturally you do play wider with higher tempos and more direct passing, but you could also play all the way out wide. Just try and take down your opposition team, um, you know, going all out, basically guns blazing. But again, just for the sake of the video, we're gonna be sticking to the tactics that I recommend, and these are the ones that I do recommend. Um, and so yeah, now uh, rather than just making the roles as is, we had a look at the players already quite generally, but we need to try and see who to keep, who to sell, and get to know our players a little bit better before we give them some roles. So, Mark Under Ter Stegen, of course, is your first choice goalkeeper. He is capable of a sweeper keeper or sweeper keeper or goalkeeper. Uh, uh, Jasper Silicon. Okay, I'm just gonna call him Jasper. He's a decent backup, 27 years of age. He's bigger than his. Uh, not bigger or taller, I don't, I'm not even sure of either one, but I meant older. He's actually older than uh, Ter Stegen and uh, he'd make a decent backup. I think his contract, he would be comfortable playing as a backup. He's a bit expensive as a backup, uh, so you might want to consider selling him and bringing in a world-class youngster uh, who can gen like eventually replace Ter Stegen. But Ter Stegen is generally young himself, so maybe you want to keep hang on Jasper for a couple of years and then invest in a good uh, young goalkeeper with potential basically. So your right backs look to be Sergio Roberto and Vidal. Roberto of course very capable as a central midfielder but I think he does the right back role quite well and because you need the numbers in there keep him for, for sure. Uh, we'll have a look at their abilities but Vidal as well is another player capable of playing anywhere across. So um, my actual suggestion is that you might be better off putting him as a right midfielder uh, than a right back just because his marking position is a bit, a bit poor and as I mentioned I like my fullbacks capable of uh, you know defending first and then attacking second it just makes a little bit more sense but yeah let's have a look at their abilities so Roberto is only considered as a good player but he can improve further and uh, the same not the same actually Vidal is just a good player so you might want to consider selling Vidal and bringing in another player who could compete with Roberto. Just keep an eye on Roberto's uh, uh, ability. If he doesn't fulfill his potential as a leading player for the division, then you're better off selling him as well and uh, bringing in another fullback. But I just want to tell you guys from now, it's tough to get top plus fullbacks in the game. Uh, Barcelona do have only 10 million again, so you need to really consider who, do, who you invest in. Uh, and it looks most likely that you will actually have to consider the left back position. Only Lucas, uh, he is a good player of course and will have potential to becoming a leader play leading player. Um, my, my suggestion would be to get a left back who is already a leading player, uh, such as Alexandro, who's very much available I think from Juventus. The issue would be parting with money. So. Uh, yeah, you'd be very careful about how you spend in this Barcelona squad uh, who are currently struggling with money. I think next year you'll be better off. Um, so centre-backs, Matteo, Piquet, Umtiti and Mascareno. I'm pretty sure Matteo can play as a left-back as well. Uh, decent left-back if needed. Um, but yeah, best, he's better off in centre back. So, Matteo, good player. Again, you can sell him off, 32 years of age, bring in a youngster of potential, uh, someone who can eventually partner Umtiti. PK and Mascarano are your first choice centre backs. Um, of course, Mascarano struggles with heading and jumping reach, so you might want to try and bring in another centre back instead, a first team centre back, and that way we can push Mascarano up to defensive mid. Of course he's 32 so maybe it's something to consider keeping him centre back. Just be careful knowing that he'll never be able to head a ball. Ever. <laughs> Just like in real life. So Mtiti is a youngster who's definitely gonna f or 
I don't want to be too definitive, but he should fulfill his potential. Youngster who's really good and, uh, you know, he's shown that in this season in uh, Barcelona. Um, and yeah, I mean, definitely an, a player to keep an eye on for, uh, try and give him as much game time as possible to fulfill his potential. Uh, we've got in midfield, so if you're playing the 4-3-3, these are your midfielders here. Um, I think Rafina as well, you can consider... Yeah, I think that's it. So you've got a number of midfielders, you've got seven, but in truth, if you're playing the 4-3-3, you only need six. You need two defensive midfielders, four central midfielders. If you're playing the 4-2-3-1, you still need six, two, uh, four central midfielders and two attacking midfielders. So you're sorted in the attacking midfielder de department if you're playing the 4-2-3-1. If you are playing the 4-3-3 though, you might want to consider bringing in another defensive midfielder. Or maybe if you just bring in a centre-back, centre then your other defensive midfielder is Mascarana. So another thing to consider. Uh, Rakitic and Gomez, we've, all spoke, we've already spoken about all these players. Gomez is a youngster still with potential. He is only good, but he's going to be leading. Uh, Rakitic is already leading, of course, in Yester. Busquets, we already know, are all leading. Rafina is maybe someone that, you know, he is going to possibly be leading, but you want to keep an eye on, just like uh, Gomez. If they don't fulfill their potentials, sell them and bring in better players. Turanch is only good. You might want to sell him off for a decent amount of money. I think you could sell him. It says 20 million and you'll really free up your wage budget, which is kind of what you need. And just bring in a youngster with potential. Actually, uh, I think if you are playing a 4-2-3-1, you might want to consider bringing in a star or a leading player in attacking uh, midfield because you kind of need that more. You have too many youngsters in uh, advance in attacking midfield, basically. Uh, Dennis Suarez, another youngster like we mentioned, so uh, he should become a leading player, but you know, another player to keep an eye on. Uh, Suarez, definitely your first choice, and Paco Alcala, Alcacer, I guess. I keep forgetting how to say his name, but he's only considered a good player, but he does have potential again. So just give him a season or two. If he doesn't fulfill it or if he doesn't play well, it doesn't have, you know, for example, a good average rating, then sell him off and bring in another player more suited to your tactics, possibly, because uh, Paco doesn't seem to well i mean i think he could be complete forward he seems decent as a complete forward but best off as a poacher anyways uh if you're playing the 442 then of course you have way too many uh midfielders and uh, you might want to consider investing in a striker of course messi can play as a striker if you have a strike partnership of messi and suarez and then neymar from, neymar from left wing for example that would be incredible front three as well so um you know, it's all about who to sit. It's not who to play, basically. Who, who, who you want to try and bring the best out of. So the 4-2-3-1, now that we know our players better, we can actually make a tactic out of this. Uh, Suarez is probably a complete forward on support as your best bet, but you, I think he's really good at uh, false nine as well. So false nine very much, you know, really suits possession base a little bit more. So uh, maybe you want to test out Suarez at false nine first if he's not playing well enough just play him as preferred roles complete forward on support he'll very much do the you know the duty itself as well advanced playmaker on attack is definitely what's needed here you have uh, Mess uh, Neymar rather here on inside forward on support and uh, um, Messi better offers it inside forward on attack of course you can change either one Neymar is very capable of playing on attack and duty as well uh, you'll have to play wing backs to complement them. So you'll have Alaba wing back on attack, which is really suits him. Wing back on support for Roberto. I guess this suits this type of, you know, a little bit more balance on the flanks here. Because if you played name uh, Messi on uh, inside forward on support, it would mean Roberto being more attacking, which doesn't really suit him too much. Uh, in this midfield uh, duo over here, like I always mentioned, the 4-3-1 has a bit has to be a bit more defensive. So central midfielder on defend and a deep line playmaker on support is the best bet. Uh, Busquets will really suit the central midfielder on defend role and then you can play of course Ne um, Iniesta or possibly uh, Rakitic here as well if you did however I think that's the best midfield duo to be honest Busquets and Iniesta but if you do want to play Iniesta and Rakitic you could consider playing a deep line playmaker on defend as well as a deep line playmaker on support or maybe even a deep line playmaker on defend and a roaming playmaker here uh, but I'd say for the, the best thing for balance is the central midfielder on the fend and a deep line playmaker on support and you do have the players capable of doing that and it is your best uh, midfield duo so i think this should be how your team looks like in a 4-3-1 you've also got a ball playing defender capable in gerard pk uh, tt is very capable a lot of your center backs are capable of playing as a ball playing defender so that should be something you consider now i normally don't suggest this but if you are playing a high line you're not sticking to my team instructions you are playing a very high line and offside trap and whatnot 
Matos Degen is very capable as a sweeper keeper, so maybe you should play him as a sweeper keeper on fan duty. And if you want to be more, you know, I guess give him a bit more freedom if you are, you know, for example, losing the game or drawing it, you could possibly switch him up to support or attacking duties. Uh, but my preference is always keeping a normal goalkeeper. I don't like sweeper keepers at all. But again, if you're playing a high line, sweeper keeper just makes sense, as well as because you've got the player capable of doing it. Um, so yeah, let's keep it as sweeper keeper, I guess. In the 4-3-3, again, complete forward on support uh, would very much be okay. Uh, Paco as well, he'll have to play the complete forward on support role. Um, but yeah, again, try out Neymar, uh, or rather Suarez as the uh, false knight. We'll still be playing inside forwards. So the flanks will look very much the same. Uh, again, if you're playing possession-based tactic, you can very much consider keeping both these um, formations. And that way you can alternate between when you're trying to be a bit more defensive, play the 4-2-3, and when you're being a bit more expansive, you can play the 4-2-3-1. You know, maybe when you want to, when you need to win the game, for example. Ball playing defender, without a doubt, again included. And uh, I like to have an anchor man, uh, an advanced playmaker on attack, and a ball winning midfielder to make up my midfield three in the 4-3-3. Like I always mention all my episodes if in case you haven't seen them. Uh, but again, we have to think about, you know, who can play where best. So, uh, defensive midfielder is Busquets. The plan playmaker on defend is apparently his best role. Uh, but I would say he can do the anchor man very comfortably as well as the defensive midfielder. So I think you should probably play him as an anchor man best. Uh, we don't need him to be a deep line playmaker in this role. We need him to really pretty much hold down the four. Halfback would be a decent shout. It would mean the wingbacks can get up, but they would very much be getting into inside forward territory in this type of formation. I think the halfback very uh, like really suits the um, formations where the where the fullbacks are the lone wide men. So the, for example, the four one two one two. There's no wide play other than the wing back. So if you play a half back and they go really high up, that's very, that's pretty much perfect. So yeah, we'll stick to the an uh, anchor man. Uh, we don't have anyone who's a ball winning midfielder unless Mascarano is playing there. Um, but again, you want to be trying to play Busquets, Iniesta, and maybe in this formation, Rakitic, for example. So it would mean uh, you would be playing either a deep line playmaker on support for Iniesta or a roaming playmaker would be a decent shout. He doesn't have the physicals for it, so maybe Rakitic suits this a bit more. Um, but yeah, I think the roaming playmaker suits this type of formation and team a bit better than deep line playmaker on support. Uh, advanced playmaker on attack, without doubt, there's a couple of players that can fulfill that and you'll have a very you know strong team there as you can tell don't forget of course the team instructions and mentality i'm just not going through that because i went through it in the 4-2-3 one so the 4-4-2 of course the direct style of play we don't have any choice but to play wingers here wide midfielder is not good enough for us defensive wingers is not something we want to consider either wide playmakers would only suit possession based style uh, of play so definitely wingers will have here uh, wingers in messi and neymar uh, of course, they'll just have to be retrained in those roles, so you maybe won't be getting the best out of them. But again, if you're playing Messi or Neymar as strikers, you don't have to worry too much about retraining them. Uh, ball playing defenders, still uh, something we should consider. I like to play a deep line playmaker on defend with a box to box when I'm playing a 4 for 2. Um, but we have to consider who you can play where. So if we're doing a Busquets and uh, Iniesta midfield, deep line playmaker on defend is perfect for Busquets and maybe play a roaming playmaker instead of a box-to-box -box midfielder for Iniesta or even Rakitic but try and eventually move to a box-to-box -box midfielder um, and up top is where pretty much you have a lot of freedom so if you play complete forward on support for uh, Suarez and let's say for example you're playing Neymar uh, I like the poacher role very much when it comes to direct style of play but maybe Neymar or Messi depending on which one you're playing we'll actually have a look at them and try and see so apparently Trecartista, deep line forward, false line, complete forward on support, poacher, very capable of doing any role, Messi really, and Neymar. Um, I would say they're a bit, they lean more towards the creative side, uh, even though they are capable of playing as a complete forward. So I think maybe you should play uh, Neymar or, uh, or Messi in the complete forward support role and just play Suarez as a poacher. I'm pretty sure Suarez is very comfortable playing as a poacher. Um, you know, he is creative, but he can destroy the poacher role, basically. Uh, he, you know, he, could, he used to do it in Liverpool as well, all the time. Uh, and then, you know, he's got the perfect trait for it, which is like to try to beat offside trap. So I think these are all your tactics pretty much set up here. 
Uh, if you're going direct style play, play the 4-4-2. You can reach but your other two tactics can be the counter mentality as well as maybe pushing up your wingers for 4-2-4 when you're trying to win the game, for example. Uh, but if you're playing possession based for this team, you actually do have the option of playing a 4-2-3-1 and a 4-3-3 and maybe retraining and uh, maybe training the third tactic as uh, you know. Uh, a counter mentality for example or even standard of either tactic uh, but yeah if you are doing possession based then just keep an eye on having you don't want to have two defensive midfielders and a two attacking midfielders that would be a little bit too many players in your squad you'd end up with 24 players i think um, so you're better off keeping just one each and hope neither one gets injured just you know try and see if there's anyone else that can play in the spots as well you know a player capable of playing in two positions but anyways I think that pretty much just leaves us with a look at the youngsters. So, uh, players to keep an eye on, an eye out on. Um, uh, no one, by the looks of it, actually, there's not really anyone here who stands out. Two and a half stars is your best bet, and that's not nice at all. Uh, but of course, you know, players exceed their potential all the time. So just you know, keep giving them loans and whatnot. Uh, and hopefully maybe someone can eventually stand out. Sampa is already ready for the division. It's probably just a case of trying to make him ready for the first team, which is you know, a very tough Barcelona first team. In truth, I think uh, if you watched my Madrid episode, Madrid are a, look, a tougher, more balanced, well-rounded team than Barcelona in truth. They're, they have a lot of strength and depth. Um, but yeah, Barcelona B is a Again, short of star youngsters, so a bit of a worry there. It looks like the La Masai is drying up, I guess. Uh, but again, just keep set sending them out on loan. I think if you have uh, anyone in under 19 who's already capable for the second division, you can send them to Barcelona B, and that way, you know, you can keep an eye on their progress and you do have the facilities for it rather than sending them out on loan to another sp Spanish second division team who might have worse off facilities and worse off coaches so yeah just something to consider only send out your players on loan if they're going to a top league i would say uh but yeah that should be all for today's episode so if you did enjoy it then please do of course hit the like button and subscribe for more daily football manager 2017 content and as always thank you all for watching